you don't have to be really, really well versed in the tea world to walk into a grocery store and see what's on the aisle. And most of the tea that's on the aisle is the low quality, cheap bag tea. We're very much still on the front end of what we would consider, you know, kind of a tea renaissance. I think it kind of merges all of that, um, you know, the, the body, mind, and soul. Um, when you're drinking it, all of those things, you know, are at a kind of a nice, even, steady, um, kind of harmonious state. All of a sudden, you know, for a lot of people, light bulb goes off and it's like, oh yeah, this is the magic water. My name's Heather Krylik and I'm one of the owners of Lake Missoula Tea Company. My name is Jake Krylik and I am a co-owner of Lake Missoula Tea Company based in Missoula, Montana. We are a small business, but in terms of our tea presence, it's growing. We source teas that are grown organically. The tea may not have the organic label, but we've been there, we see it. They're not using pesticides. They've never used pesticides. We in America trying to get a little transfixed on those specific names and the slogans, you know, sort of that are generated from it um, and maybe lose sight of some of the on the ground issues. There's an issue of affordability um, because all of these labels um, cost um, in, in order to be able to participate in the program. You can buy a label. So if you're a very large company, you can, um, you can afford to get a particular label and then you're not really sure how much oversight goes on with that label. I don't need the label to tell me that it's organic, but you have to go there and know what you're getting. You know, you can't just, um, if you don't go and see it, you won't know. First and foremost, it's developing those strong relationships, you know, on the ground with those people. and. and and from that, I think then a lot of good work um, and good product can come out of that. David actually saw that we had been serving, he'd, he'd seen our information on our website. He was a farmer in Kenya, he contacted me and he and I started a relationship um, uh, with buying tea, et cetera. And I said, look, you know, we really, we, go to, we like to go and visit the places where we um, get our tea from. Um, and he said he would more than welcome that. Purple tea is um, Kenya's approach to climate change, where they know that um, they know the climate's changing, and so the purple tea plant can withstand drought and extreme frost more so than um, just a regular tea plant. The purple tea plant in Kenya has been crossed with um, native plants there, and I think that's what makes it hardier. So Kenya, the, the government is invested in it, and they're trying to survive and do it, do it in a good way and pay their employees really well and just do, do the best that they can. And um, so we wanted to go over there and learn enough that we could come back and expand the purple tea story. We decided early on to make an investment in traveling and having relationships and then also educating our community about that. So that's another big part. So sharing that so we could go and not really talk about it. I know a lot of companies do go directly to places and stuff, but a big component of ours is share what you've learned then and bring that back. And we do as much as we can. In a small way, how does it impact people? I know that when we buy tea from a particular farmer, or tea estate owner, in some instances, I know that it may, has a big impact on the lives of others. Ten, eleven years ago, when we were exposed to really good tea, it was like I always thought tea was peppermint, you know, and you put a lot in and you steep it a long time, and that's not tea. Tea is Camellia sinensis and it's got this really awesome flavor and um, you can add peppermint and different herbs to it and that's really awesome. But then there's all this flavor that you can get from this one plant depending on how it's been manufactured, whether it's a white tea or a green tea or an oolong and it just, I had no clue, I had no idea. Tea has theanine, so true tea we're talking about from Camellia sinensis has an amino acid in it called um, L-theanine or theanine. And theanine has the effect kind of lowering your stress, but in conjunction with the caffeine, it kind of has this balancing kind of focusing effect. And I think people crave that kind of feeling that you get. 
someone gets up and they want a cup of tea or throughout the day they're like, oh, I want a cup of tea because it has this kind of feeling about it. The thing about loose leaf tea is that you still have to do it right. And so, you know, just throwing a tea bag in a cup of boiling water, um, you know, which is how most people are familiar with it, there's so much more that you have to learn. And so for a lot of people, it can be a little intimidating coming into the shop. It's just because there's so much there, kind of walking them through some of the varieties and giving them a little bit more information about how to brew it. You know, that makes the world a difference for people.